Good morning, Wesley. How are you today? I'm fine, Rinda. How are you? I'm fine. So That's why don't good. you tell everyone your uh, name and your title? Okay, it's Wesley Field and I'm the Director of uh, Innovation and Learning at Waverley College in Sydney, Australia. And what first gave you the idea of coming to Oregon to visit our program? Uh, funnily enough, you did. Uh, I was having a Skype conversation about uh, so I wanted to bring somebody in internationally to uh, stimulate some discussion with my students and we got talking about uh, some critical thinking and you told me how you'd done a bit of critical thinking program work in Oregon. Uh, I was travelling that way so I thought I'd have a little look and see what you were doing. And what is it that you saw here that caught your attention? Well, um, what I saw both there and in a couple of other places that I was looking at in the States were programs where students were uh, encouraged to develop their independence. Uh, so what I saw when I walked into Arlington was the teacher pretty well sitting in the middle of the room and students just getting on with work all around her and at the point where they were stuck they would come and ask a question of the teacher and then they would get back to work again. Uh, and most of the time they would discuss with each other um, what was the issue and, and how to get uh, that solved before they go to the teacher. So it was that independence that I was after um, and engagement I guess. It was a quiet uh, hum in the room as students were getting on with their work and that's what we wanted to get going here. I guess what we have here at the moment is that's happening in a few classrooms but in st still too many classrooms it's uh, somebody up the front the fountain of all the knowledge, um, telling them that they must learn at the same pace, um, listen to me and um, you'll sit there and, and you will learn and that really disengages the students and the boys get quite irritated and difficult to manage when you put them in that situation. So what do you envision in a partnership between Frontier Learning and your organisation? Well already we've, we've seen huge benefits in terms of sharing expertise between um, yourself, myself, um, giving each other clues on, on how to improve different bits and pieces. You've done work with our uh, students and teachers, helped me design some stuff in the classroom. If we come up with something great here, that we should be able to share that with your teachers. So it's really a, a sharing of knowledge and expertise between uh, teaching community and uh, engagement of kids with each other on, on real world projects. I know you guys have got fossil beds and the wind farms and things like that. We've got plenty of ocean uh, work and uh, uh, outback information that we could provide to your people. So uh, having the students come up with um, real world projects, uh, sharing internationally and having teachers share expertise, whether that be internationally or whether that be on something common within the curriculum, uh, for example, studying geometry and mathematics. Um, there are some things that we can just share directly that will fit into our curriculum, that sort of thing. So tell, talk about the exchange of uh, information between cultures, having our students talk to each other, and, and we've talked about other countries coming in as well to the, to the network. How do you feel about the value for our students for cultural exchange in this format? Well, it's, it's sort of, you need to take a step back every so often. I've been doing this for... Uh, many years and um, talking to you like this is just um, second nature to me now um, and people all over the world. But every time you bring a student in and they, they talk to, you know, like in your case, they talk to Rinda from Oregon. Oregon's near New York, isn't it? And then they pull out Google Maps and uh, it must be hot there and they find out that it's actually snowing and it's on the other side of the country and their whole concept of the world starts to change. The fact that you've got an accent is pretty amazing to them. Um, they just, they just really, it just opens their world to that there are other people around. Um, and sometimes as teachers, we we have an adult understanding of the world and assume that everybody else has got that. Uh, students can actually have a very um, restricted view of the world. You know that they live here and what's over the hill. You know, some of them even here in Sydney, Australia, big city, haven't been past the hill on the other side there or haven't been past the city line uh, and we forget that. So to actually be speaking to people in other countries is, is a bit of a blowout for them and it starts to open their minds to the fact that people may have, may look similar but uh, may be completely different in the way they see the world. 
And we did even talk a little bit about having a, a basketball tour and your your folks coming over and playing basketball with our various schools and, and uh, business. Yeah, yeah. Now. Well, um, what we're really into here, we've got a new principal, Ray Paxton, who has looked at that. We've traditionally had basketball tours and rugby tours where they've gone and played basketball, but um, he's not really interested in that. Obviously, they would still play basketball, and um, he likes the idea of going to the smaller areas because obviously Americans are a little better at basketball than Australians, so we might actually have a chance if we go to smaller areas. <laughs> well, uh, don't bet what on it. <laughs> what we're keen on uh, is to, yes, play basketball, but really do something for the community. This is a Catholic school we're at, so it's really the ethos of, ethos of the school to get in there and to work with the community and, and look at um, more of those um, community-based issues. So how can we turn a basketball tour into more of a missionary-type tour? Into uh, you know, What good can we bring to the community? What good can we receive from the community and have a couple of games as well? Terrific. We've been talking a little bit about standards, and I've been delving into uh, Australian standards, mostly maths right now. So do you think there's a significant conflict when teachers try and work together from countries where their standards aren't, ident aren't identical? Well, yes. What I'm coming up against here is, you know, why, why would we be going to the Americans um, for any advice when, you know, our literacy and numeracy standards are higher? Um, well, okay, <laughs> fair enough argument. Uh, but you would then have to say, well, hang on, is Waverley's literacy numeracy standards higher than Arlington's, for example? Um, so, look, I, I believe there's plenty of things that come out of different countries that can then be reapplied in another country that improve it. I think the whole problem-based problem learning movement started in Sweden uh, or Denmark, one of those areas, and that's come across the States, come across to Australia, and, and we've changed it and tweaked it and and got plenty of benefits. So, you know, I don't look at it as this is American or this is Japanese or this is whatever. It's just good educators trying things. So what I was after when I went to the States was who was achieving things with students. And you've got the database research there to say that these kids are absolutely screaming the house down in terms of their achievement um, and, and getting things leaping ahead in achievement that they didn't have before. Uh, so I'm interested in that model. Now, I'm sure if we pick up that model and bring it over here, then we'll go again because in the end, those uh, literacy standards and numeracy standards are, are only about teaching to the test uh, and there's a lot more to life than that. So I like the idea of developing the independence and um, um, getting kids to think outside the square, which is what I think your model does. So. You have traveled all around the world. I think you told me you've presented uh, keynote addresses on every continent. And, and in, in those environments, you are billed as an educational futurist. And when you came and presented here, you absolutely talked about the future of education. In your global explorations of, explorations of the innovation of learning, how does the Frontier Learning Network fit into that? Uh, well, it's right up there. So, as I said, I, I don't look at the countries. I look at what's happening in the countries and what are the elements. And the elements I'm seeing for future education are that students can find information by themselves and learn how to seek out answers to questions and problems, uh, be the independent learners that we're describing, um, and not all operate on the same stream at the same time. Um, there's too much options for them now. Uh, they can get onto the internet, they can find a fantastic maths teacher, um, they, they can seek other alternatives to education. So what we've got to offer them in schools is to tap into those resources that are all over the net. And we can do that through learning management systems, we can do that through different programs through the internet. Um, so we need to set up the ability for kids to use those resources, not run away from them, and uh, but have them locally shaped and that's where I think the local teacher comes in you know there's research here in Sydney University that's that they did where their students looked at the best lecturers uh, from MIT and they had one class just doing that um, and so they went to arguably the best lecturers in the world for their subject and studied their, their um, subject listened to those professors and those professors only 
and they did not do as well as the classroom who used those professors but then gave a local context around it. Uh, so the best results were still from a blended environment, where a, a blend between um, internet resources and other media resources and the classroom teacher. So that classroom teacher has an enormously important role and in the Arlington model what I see is they are still a central role in terms of when the students get stuck they come to the teacher but the teacher doesn't answer the question they lead the student to answer it themselves uh, but it's that pushing that leading them to ask more questions to think deeper to go away and not rely on the teacher for the answer that's impressive. So what would you say to any ent school entity, school district or building that is interested or considering at least the possibility of joining our uh, network? Uh, I'd get in while the iron's hot because <laughs> what I'd be advising is that we don't go too big too quickly. Uh, we've got interest now from, uh, at my end at least, from Canada, uh, from Australia, a couple of schools in Australia, Japan's looking there, and I know South Africa will be very interested. So we don't want to go too big too quick, I believe. Uh, so we're after like-minded schools who, who really want to achieve some pretty good outcomes um, with their students. If you're interested in that, then I'd advise you to contact Rinda and get involved as quickly as you can because we can't take every school on the planet at this point. We need to limit that and uh, we'll limit it to those who are most interested and uh, keenest. That's my opinion. I'm not sure if you agree with that. I agree, absolutely. Okay, yeah, okay. any last words? Uh, last words, um, who am I talking to? Well, initially you're talking to uh, school leaders, primarily. Okay, uh, look, I think uh, what is happening here at Oregon is truly um, top of the world from what I've seen uh, in many, many countries. Um, it's amazing that such a small spot would have a model that, that um, embodies all the things that modern education, the research is, is saying to do. So I'd have a, a really good look into this and see well, what's in it, how can we apply aspects of that to, to our world, how can we get involved. Um, I'm actually also in a situation here where I'm teaching and uh, I'll give you one sample yesterday. We, we were asking students to come up with a diagram that uh, normally I would say okay buddy all together now here's a, here's a Venn diagram and this is what a Venn diagram looks like and this is how it is and the students would go yeah yeah Venn diagram yeah yeah and they copy it down well we don't do that anymore we say you know what sort of diagram would allow you to demonstrate the similarities and differences between these people's opinions and so the kids come up and say well what's the diagram you say mm, I don't know you know can you tell me something that would um, show Similarities, how, how would you do that? And they'd, they'd come up with the idea, oh, it's got to overlap somehow, it's got to do this. Yesterday what happened is this student came up with a diagram where he had them all separate and everything, but he then linked them with arrows. And uh, it was between teachers, parents and students. And I said, so how's that going to show differences? And he said, oh, well, the students' ones are over there and the teachers' ones are over there and the parents' ones are down there, they're the differences. Uh, uh, where's the similarities? He said, well, I've got another circle here in the middle. And if it was, um, say, uh, yellow and green, uh, students and teachers, then the similarities between those would come to one that was blue. So he'd combine the colours to make uh, um, the similarities one. So he actually designed this thing on the colour wheel. Wow. So now we're talking <laughs> cross KLA stuff, understanding. And, of course, the ones where they were all together, all, all these colours coming mm. together was the black one in the middle. Uh, with white text on top so you could read it. Uh, so it was pretty amazing thinking. I, I wouldn't have come up with that. Uh, so when we give them the chance to explore and uh, discover things for themselves, they come up with the most incredible things. Um, and I'm learning as a teacher to shut up and let them have a go and uh, ask questions. And uh, it's, it is achieving amazing results. The class in period six was dead quiet, well behaved and on task. Um, it wasn't like that four weeks ago. Uh, so that's what we're in it for, and uh, amazing benefits can be had. Excellent. Okay. Thank you for your I'll time. <laughs> okay, thanks, Rinda. Bye-bye. Thanks for being involved. Bye-bye.